Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Rock Shop with Ralph, your source for the best celebrity interviews. And tonight, Hard Rock is alive and well. I have Supergroup Freak Show featuring three legends and a soon-to-be legend. Who are the legends, you say? Did I hear you say that? Well, we got the first legend is Mr. Stan Howen from the formerly of the band Wasp and currently in Metal Church. We have Mr. Greg Chason, who was in one of the most underrated bands in the 90s, Badlands, most recently of Atomic Kings uh, on bass. And I can't believe this, but I got none other than Mr. Carlos Cavazzo, formerly of Quiet Riot, the first hard rock band to have a number one album on the charts. <laughs> yeah, we got lucky on that one. Huh? Uh, yeah, lucky your ass. You deserve it. <laughs> and good. on vocals, we have a blooming legend. He's a local legend, but he's a blooming legend. He's going to be a legend after playing with these guys. We have Mr. Ronnie Borscher. Did I say your name right? Yeah, you did. That's right. Thank you. You I'm got it. Even, I'm not even close to the same as these guys, but it's an honor to play with them. I'll say that. Bro, you got legends here. You got legends yeah, well, here. In our eyes, you are a star, so that's all that matters. That's yeah. right. Exactly. You got legends here. I forgot to say that Step played on one of one of my favorite Was albums of all time, The Crimson Idol. Um, yeah, thank you. He, one of my, I mean, Chainsaw Charlie himself. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, an awesome time. what's up, guys? We're getting it done. How is everybody? I cranked that album many times, by the way. That oh, God, up. man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, that's maybe we'll talk about it a little bit, but I try to keep everything what we're doing now. I mean, sure. we all have the elephant in the room, your former bands. Uh, anybody that looks at my, as I've seen my previous interviews with other people, I try to keep it current. We'll talk a little bit about it, but if you want to talk about it, boast away. You deserve it. You guys are legends. Anyway, we're talking about the band Freak Show. They have their second album out. On let me see if I pronounce this right. Union Records. Yes, that's how you pronounce Ionian. it, right? How do you say yeah, it? Ionian. 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 E O N I A N Records. I thought it was like Union, like Motley Crue has the two dots on the top, so I pronounced it like that. Anyway, um, their album came out in October. Their song, You Shine, is stuck in my ear for the past month. I, I can't get it out of my head. That song rocks so friggin' much. And by the way, fans, the guitar solo is alive and well. Listen to this album. Guitar <laughs> solos galore. My my buddy right there, Mr. Carlos Tabata. Yeah. Anyway. I get away with a lot. I did do solos everywhere. <laughs> <Probably too much. laughs> He's doing a solo right now. Look, what are you doing there? <laughs> what Carlos did is he just recorded a bunch of solos, then Ronnie wrote some songs around them. Uh, <laughs> is that, is... So what starts the inevitable question, how did this come about? I mean, that's just a standard question. But I, I will say, and I haven't shut up yet, you guys better start talking. Um, we will. You started out in 2021 with previous members, Jeff Labar well, from no, Cinderella. That, that was that 2009. 2000, but I'm saying that the CD came out in 2021, correct? No, that was just a reissue. A reissue, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. I stand corrected. Yeah, that's all right. So it was 2009. You had Jeff Labar, Tony Franklin, and Frankie Benali, correct? Yeah. And we know, obviously, both of them uh, are gone, passed away. And now, hence, we, we're 2023. We have the second album featuring you guys. So I'm going to ask this question. How did it come about? How did you get this group of guys together, Ronnie? Um, well, it, it started that we were going to do, you know, like we're doing right now, you know, a second album. But this is, in my eyes, the first album because, you know, this is a whole new lineup and a completely different vibe and sound, right? Sa absolutely. So, I agree. You know, but... Um, Stet and I, uh, we, well, Jeff and I uh, decided that we wanted to ask Step to play on the new Freak Show, and we were throwing bass players around, and we didn't have anybody exactly yet, 
but the nucleus of that and then uh and then jeff passed away and it just really put a damper on the whole thing and it just kind of sucked but what a great I, guy yeah he was he was he was, he was. Guy. we love and, a good uh, guy. jeff and i wanted to um you know we wanted to do a new thing you know and uh it just didn't uh it didn't happen but <laughs> But uh, Stet and I, I we just talked one day and said, "Hey, you know, let's uh, let's try to do that." What's all that noise going on? Not me. I don't have any noise. Sounds like a TV going. Or... A TV? Uh, I, I'm quiet over here in uh, at Stet's place. I got nothing. It ain't I, me. I don't know where that's coming from. But anyway. Um, you know, and it didn't, uh, you know, it took a while to put it together. And I said, Stet, Hey, you, you want to, let's do this album anyway, you know, and we'll, we'll figure it out and let's, we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll find someone. And, you know, I asked Carlos and he was like all down to do it. And, Ronnie, uh, give me, give me one second. Let me just, let me just adjust this. <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be so bush league, but is that better? Yeah. There you oh, go. Yeah, yeah it was a, it was a it was a sorry, it was somebody playing outside. There you go. Okay, yeah, so uh, you, did you open the window and tell him shut shut up? <laughs> no, I'm Get sorry. The hell out. I, I didn't hear it. I'm very sorry. Go ahead. I'm listening, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, so you know, we uh Stet and I we talked one day and we decided, yeah, we still want to do this. And I said, you know, let's dedicate it to Jeff. And, you know, but when I kind of, we started doing it, I didn't think it was going to come out like it did, you know, the nucleus of all of us and Greg, you know, being the final guy, it was like, you know, damn, I didn't, I didn't think the album was going to come out so remarkable like it, it did, you know, because everyone really shines on it. Phenomenal, phenomenal album. And, and I, I'm trying to. I mean, on your Wikipedia page, they say Joe Elliott. They say all these Brian Johnson. I'm sorry. When I listen to you, I hear Tame Me Down from Faster Pussycat. You don't hear that? Uh-oh. Yeah, we love Tammy. Yeah, I hear him. No? No. But uh, that, that <laughs> no. And that, no, that's no. not a knock on you, uh, Ronnie. I mean, I'm, I'm being a fan. I'm telling you what I hear. Yeah, well, that early stuff is reference to Miss Crazy, right? And the first freak show, which I I did more of the raspy, right style stuff, and those were a lot of my influences back then. But you know, now it's just about singing more. But um, yeah, I I I I, I like to to sing more, you know, um, you know, you, you take it. You... It's a lot of different things going on there. You take a song like "Loving You, Loving Me." I, I I hear a little bit of Ozzy in your voice. Yeah, thank you. I oh. love that. Oh, that's okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you what I hear. So, guys, listen. Ron, how, how does this come up? Ron, Ronnie comes up with the songs. He sends them to you, and you guys add, add your little nuances to it. Or uh, well, is it all a group Ronnie, effort? Let's start with Stet. Uh, well, what happens is uh, on this one, Ronnie uh, sent me the, the guitar, the guitar um, roughs and the uh, riffs, roughs, rough riffs and uh, the click. And I grooved to them and I laid down the permanent drums to the click scratch. I didn't have any vocals at the time. So I was like just envisioning where I thought they would go. You know, there's obvious places. This stuff was pretty wide open. So it was like a pleasure for me because I, I had just finished about five months of writing and recording Metal Church. And the new Metal Church was a grueling experience. I can't even say I enjoyed it. It was so pain in the ass. So like five months of five days a week, six days a week of really, really trying, you know? And the reason it took so long is because we were writing. So it was this grueling process, a bunch of thrash beats. And then Ronnie, when I was about halfway done, he sent me these, all these roughs. And I'm like, well, I started, I started listening to them uh, while I was finishing the Metal Church record. So by the time I actually finished the Metal uh, Church record, I was totally ready to do the freak show and I banged it, all these out in like three takes, you know, these are all like, there's not a punch on the record. They're, everyone's a front to back take. Cause you know, Greg will tell you old school, man. We used to, we used to go and you record on two inch and we'd barely punch, you know, we'd hardly do punches, especially drums. So, um, 
these are all true from the heart grooves, you know, and, and, um, you know, if Ronnie wasn't so great, you know, the, the whole thing wouldn't be so great, but it started there and he inspired me and I did some, what I feel would be good drum tracks and I sent them back to Ronnie and then he built on them. And, and, uh, then I believe Greg brought it to life with amazing bass playing and, uh, the legend. and, um, yeah. And then Carlos just, you know, it was, was like the beautiful cream on top, man. It was really, really, really great. You know, really great. I, I was, I, I'm, it was I'm sorry, an accidental, man. beautiful creation, you know? And you got you guys got a phenomenal album, yeah. And I'm not I'm not kidding. I mean, you. honestly, you guys have a phenomenal album, and it's it, burning. It has, it's getting plenty it of plays out there. It had to be done this way too, like the way we did it to get what we got. Like if we were to go in a recording studio on a label's expense, we probably would have spent like a hundred thousand dollars because it's like you know, the time that we took and and it took a long time and. Carlos, you know, really absorbed the tunes and it's obvious, you know, what he did there. And yeah, he did a lot of soloing and it was hard for myself and the engineer to not use the stuff, you know, so that's why there's a lot. How do you of not use something from him? <laughs> Carlos, how do they not use it? Even, even the worst take from you, how do they not use that? Uh, yeah, well, well, for me, you know, uh, I had known Stet through the years and I've known Greg also through the years, but I've never met Ronnie before, but he contacted me through my wife on on the internet. And, Your wife, uh, uh, my wife Vicky, and then uh, he he told me what he had going on, and you know Jeff. I, I knew I'd heard of the band before. I knew Jeff and Frankie were in the band and all that. And uh, I, I always liked Jeff. He was always really nice to me. And uh, ever since I've been in this band, I've seen all kinds of pictures of me and him surface on the internet. It's pretty funny. But I've met him many a times, and he's always really cool. And I, so he sent me the tracks, and I really liked it. I think at the time, it might not even been Greg on bass. I think it was Ronnie playing the bass on some of that stuff. Yeah, Correct some of the wrong. rough ones. But then when I did the vocals, that was – and I sent you all those, that was that already was Greg. Yeah. But my, my, I did like the material, and I heard all kinds of stuff in it, you know, and – uh, you know, obviously everybody recorded at home, so I was at home too with, with no producer. You know, let a guitar player go wild and no <laughs> producer. <laughs> yeah, my, my next question, Carlos, was: I mean, listen, I, I, and I don't use this term loosely. You're a legend in this business. You okay. you you made your bones. You, you don't have to you don't have to validate yourself with anybody. What what you have to say? And, and mind, this is credit to you. These guys immerse themselves in this project because the project is very, very good. I mean, Carlos, what what do you what takes you to immerse yourself in a full on band like this? Does it start with the oh, songs? I like the people and I like the music. Oh yeah, I love working with people and writing songs with people. Although I didn't write none of the material in this particular record, but uh, I like recording with people and and you know, especially you know, cool as guys as these guys are. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We don't want to have any assholes in the band, you know, that, that, no, no, that, messes, the, that messes up the chemistry. I guess I'm I better read it. I guess I I'm going to segue it. into Greg Chason. <laughs> hey, yeah. Greg, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm good. My friend. Greg. Yes. Tell to me. Come on. Talk to me. What's going on? How how did you <laughs> – I, I always say to Greg, and I say this all over Facebook, anytime we correspond, I'll go to my grave saying he won, he's really one of the most underrated bass players out there you don't get enough props i appreciate it okay so you know, talk to oddly me. enough i'm not sure how my name came up in this i mean ronnie contacted me <laughs> Stet, said, Stet and carlos said I, I i've known both of them for years but i never asked the question you know how did my name come up because i'm kind of off the grid and you know not really in the competitive music business that much i just kind of do my stuff here in arizona and uh so i mean I guess I'll have to ask Ronnie one day. Uh, um, I'll, I'll just let, tell you really quick. I, yeah, tell I, uh, <laughs> We were we're Facebook friends, and um, I just I saw these this post of you and Jakey Lee, you know, back in the day when it like out a hit parade or something, and it, and I and I was like, damn, this guy gets like six hundred and eighty three likes on a freaking picture from you know, <laughs> back in the day, you know, Jakey Lee and shit. So. I just started scrolling through his page and stuff. And that's when the guy that, uh, okay, I almost said his name, sorry. Uh, the guy that. <laughs> <laughs> you can say his name. Beelzebub. 
Yeah, the guys we were going to have play bass. It didn't work out, right? So I was oh. like, I, I just kind of threw it out there, you know, and waited for you to respond. And you wrote back pretty quick. And here we are. There you go. Well, and also, I, I got to say that we did... Uh, there was a discussion, and when when Greg's name came up, I was I was like perky. I was like Greg. I mean, because me and him, me and Greg have been friends for years, and I used to. He probably doesn't remember, but when we were all at mates in the old days, I'd be sitting around waiting for, for Ray to get done because me and Ray were we go we used to go chase chicks together, you know. And uh, sometimes I, I don't know if you remember this, Greg, but you guys have run the set, and and then Jake would go, "Let's run it again," and we, and I'd be outside going, "Fuck," you know. You remember when you'd have to run the set like for a second time? Oh, yeah. I, I, because I, I, I remember that dude, and, I, and you didn't know it, uh, but I was out there, you know, putting my freaking cologne on and you know, smelling my armpits, getting ready to go to the. You wait, you wait your car, you wait your car jet. Uh, stay. Oh, Jesus. yeah, because yeah, me and Ray were good friends, and uh, your we, car. We, used to ra- we, we used to raise hell, but I was a, a big fan of Badlands, and um, I always thought Greg was an amazing bass player. I was like, oh man, I'd love to play with that guy someday, you know. But he, he was playing with my other buddy, Eric Singer. I'm like, yeah, it'll probably be a minute before he wants to play with me, you know? So it took like 30 years or something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I love it. You know, we've always been friends. We've always been very respect, always been respectful and stuff. And I'm just glad we got to, to cross paths. And, and I got to say that um, the bass playing really brought, in my, in, to me, really brought the album to life. You know, I, I thought it took it to the next level, you know? It opened yeah. it up. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Totally, totally. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, now Ryan, you said... Yeah, Carlos, this is for you. Um, Ronnie, your idea, it was you that did full on shred because I thought it was all Carlos. Oh, no, that's that's Carlos on lead guitar. I just came up with the initial. I'm saying the idea, right? Right, yeah. Oh, Ronnie's a great rhythm player, he he could great guitar player, man. He does stuff that's like hard to play. He does took me that's one of my favorite tracks on the album. I'm like, fucking Carlos, man, blew it up. All the the tracks uh, on the on the songs. Except for solos, I think it's all me. I, I, I can't remember if you yeah. did it or... I want all right, guys, to... listen, the three of you... I, I'm going to cut you guys off. I'm just going to interview Ronnie now, because this is it's all his album, so that, that's... No, I'm no, with... no, really, look. <laughs> it, was, it was him that made... The, like, when Greg came in and, and gave us that foundation of what, you know... Because I sang to his stuff, too. It's like, when I was laying down my vocals, it was the complete, you know, rhythm section... And I did all my stuff and then we sent it to Carlos and he did all kinds of stuff everywhere, you know, played all the rhythms, added textures, did these solos everywhere, even where they weren't supposed to be. Right. Sure. And, uh, and it was like, great, because oh. we had more than enough stuff. Like, I got to tell you this, Carlos, really quick. There's a solo for you, Shine, that you did. That's insane. <laughs> but it's in the wrong place. Right. And, but I'm going to do this remix one day for somebody with that solo on there because it's like one of the greatest solos, but it was, I couldn't not use the other stuff, but the nucleus of what we do and this, the, the way this band came about, you can't take away anybody. Right. So when it says, you know, Hey, you wrote this or that, that doesn't matter you take away one dude and you don't have the sound or the, 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 the performance in the whole overall, you know, so we're a four way split in this band, you know, it's not about that, but the next record could be, you know, who knows, you know, I'm, well, I'm excited. Before we mention the next record, I got, I always start to tell the fans when I, when I'm promoting an album, I always tell them what tracks to start with. You guys don't believe me, which They'll, they'll believe me because I always say I don't blow smoke up anybody's ass. We don't know. St- start with start with you shine. Start with full on shred. It hurts me. And my favorite one on the album would have to be "Tell Me You Love Me." That's one of my favorites really? on there. Yes. Yeah, me too. I like that one. Yes, I like it. You shine like? is my favorite one. You can't play beer bottles till you shine, though. Uh, Actually, I could, brother. <laughs> I could. I could. That's so funny. Stead, uh, I fucking love you, man. You don't know how much. I'm a drummer myself. You're, you're one of my biggest influences. You, Vinny Abbasi, and Cozy Powell, period. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Oh, wow. I mean, anybody that can play beer bottles is my is, is all right in my book. <laughs> I, it's, you know, it's so funny. I invented that. I don't know. These guys don't even know. I have no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I know who invented that. We all know who invented that. 
The guy, Ooh. that's somebody we were talking about before. What? No, no, never mind, no, never mind. No, 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 actually, uh, Ricky Medlock helped me helped me invent the beer bottle drum solo. Ricky Medlock for this now in Leonard Skinner. When I was in Blackfoot, Blackfoot. I, I would Blackfoot. do my drum solo. I would do my drum solo, you know, and then I'd, I'd do my, my hand routine, and I'd, I'd go, dung, 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 and i smash it, and I'd, and I'd stand there, and he'd come up and, hit, and, and pour a beer down my throat and then hand me the beer and walk away. I'm like, what the fuck? i got to do something now. So I started banging around with one beer bottle, and I said, I wonder what would happen if I tried two, and then now I got it down to a science, but I, bro- I broke like, you know, a thousand beer bottles. I must have had, you know, oh. 300 stitches trying to figure it out. <laughs> so we're talking about this album. Um, obviously, we're going to try to get some live, live dates going, going, correct? Correct. Yeah. Everybody's up. Everybody's up for live dates. Everybody's up. Oh, Carlos? Everybody's up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Carlos? I'm in there. Yeah. Yeah. You have any? I mean, you're, you're, he's already talking about the next album. You have any, and Does anybody have any ideas for the next album? <laughs> Carlos? Uh, everybody's probably got ideas in their head. I'm constantly writing material. I'm sure Ronnie is instead, and Greg as well. You know, I constantly got music going through my head. And I, if it's something good, I put it down on recording device so I don't forget it. <laughs> I would yeah. like to say, as I would like to say, as a booker, uh, we're gonna milk the record we got for a minute, and we can certainly yeah. start working on another one. But I, we we haven't quite started to squeeze the life out of this one yet. So if we could, no. imagine the record. next record, somebody else did. <laughs> no, no. I think I, I think getting the next record ready is always a good idea, you know. But I mean, this is a beautiful record. There's great songs. Um, yeah. There is interest in the band. It's just we're because of the that we're grown ups. We we only entertain. Um, I, I use the word cherry pick. We only look into cherry pick offers. Uh, you know, we are talking about doing some West Coast stuff. So obviously, we'd be talking about Vamp and the whiskey and some stuff like that. You know, to where where our friends could all go, but. Um, you know, we also want to jump on some bigger bills, I and mean, we're we're all friends with huge bands. You know, so it's like we're gonna we're gonna be like, hey man, I heard you're playing the Palladium. You uh, you know, we're we're gonna start bothering our buddies in a minute. You know, but right. we're not desperate. We're not desperate, and and uh, we're carrying ourselves with the utmost of dignity because because of the uh, pedigree and the band, and you know. Well, I tell you, I I go anywhere anywhere that you guys would be. I mean, I hope you guys come down to Florida. I'm close by uh, where where uh, Stead is. Actually, you're you're not you're only there once a month, right? Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm here more. I'm here uh, a lot right now. Uh, a bunch of changes going on in my bar, and uh, so I'm in Fort Myers. And uh, Florida is a very healthy um, rock and roll environment. You know, is, I man. believe that I believe this band will probably start on the West Coast for the convenience of of you know like Carlos and and, and Greg are right there. You guys are in California, right? I am, yeah, and, and uh, Ronnie. I'm sorry, Stead. California. No, good, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, they're they're in uh, um, California and Arizona, so they're over there. Yeah. And initially, it's it best to make it easier on the front end. And then if we play a couple of gigs over there, we'll get all excited and we'll be more willing to go over there. Where you know what I mean? <laughs> I gotta say this about Carlos. I gotta say this about Carlos. I've been since I'm 13 years old. I've been waiting to see this guy, meet this guy, whatever. And I always had, I'm sure you guys did, you always had this picture of, if, if I met him or if I see him, I wonder what he sounds like. I wonder what he looks like. I wonder how he is. <laughs> this guy is the most laid back freaking guitar I ever saw in my life. I am a laid back person. I am. Oh my He's God. Considering the way you play and ha- how you are, your demeanor, it's like night and day. I'm like, holy cow, man. But you're it's a great guy. Stage, you know? you gotta doesn't, like doesn't. Doesn't take away the way I feel about you, brother. You are a oh, huge influence you, in my yeah, life. I'm, I'm pretty laid back. Kind of quiet, I guess. Uh, quieter than... Tranquilo. Me. The Spanish call it tranquilo. Yeah, tranquilo. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, I know we're pressed for time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out some names, and I want you guys... Are you, are you want to talk some more? Set. I can talk more. No problem. No, no. I'm just saying, yeah, we're not... We're, we're enjoying this. We, we love this. Oh, no, see that? No, all right, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep it. I'm not pressed for time. But listen, right. I'm going to throw some names out at you. Go ahead, Ronnie. Right. No, seriously, I like this part. Go ahead. Yeah, throw I'm going to throw some names out at you, and I want you guys to tell me the first thing that comes to your head, maybe a little bit of story behind it. Ronnie, um, Jeff LeBlanc. Oh, man. Um, uh, a friend uh, outside of music. Uh, just a wonderful, warm, loving guy. And I, it's just an, was such an honor to play with him and record with him and tour with him like I got to. 
And, uh, you know, I'll always cherish and, and love the guy. You know, he was great. Awesome. I'm going to go to uh, Greg. Greg, Jakey Lee. Uh, my best friend, uh, best guitar player I ever saw, my favorite guitarist. Uh, he's quiet, kind of like Carlos. But, uh, <laughs> well, Carlos is kind of quiet and kind of just laid back. So is Jake. And, uh, but they're both brilliant guitarists, and I think they let their playing do the talking more than, you know, creating a bunch of drama anywhere. I don't really know of any drama with Carlos or, or Jake, but uh, he's, uh, he's the man in my book. He's the man. Yes, we got to get him out of, we got to get him out from behind his uh, desk or whatever he's doing. We got to get him out there again. I think he's <laughs> waiting to get some surgery done on with his hands uh, on his, on his uh, right hand. It affects his, uh, picking technique and I think he's just waiting for that to happen uh, as a matter of fact wow. while, we, while we've been doing this interview I've gotten like three messages from him so I haven't even read them to see what they are uh -huh. I know I know he's waiting for that to take place what happens to his hand is it like an arthritis or something like that no nah, it's like a carpal tunnel sort of thing <laughs> oh, you know wow. from overuse I had I had carpal tunnel surgery back in the day when it was an invasive surgery where they yeah. actually cut you open and uh, you know People that play piano or lots of times guitar players right. or uh, something that, uh, for me, like throwing a baseball, that motion of your wrist doing what that. What about jacking off? Does that do it? Ah. That? Carlos, <laughs> there it is. Boom. All right. I was waiting for you to freaking come out of your show, brother. I was, I was I mentioning jacking off. Holy shit. I missed that. What did he say? <laughs> action, Jackson. Yeah, right. look great. at Ronnie. Look at Ronnie. Ronnie's like, "Holy shit, where is this thing going?" Now? I told you, Ronnie. I said, "Listen, this is how it is, brother." <laughs> anyway, uh, Stead knows where I'm going with this one. He knows what I'm going to say. Yeah. Blackie Lawless. Blackie Lawless. I got to tell you, uh, dear friend, mentor. Uh, in a way, he taught me how to fish. When I first joined Wasp, um, he he detected that I was business oriented. And he handed me a book called This Business of Music. It's a big, fat book. And it, it was, he said, if you read this, it's going to change your life. And I, I did. But uh, Blackie Lawless is um, misunderstood. He's so misunderstood. Um, we've had fights. I quit the band. I don't know how many times. You know what I'm saying? But um, I absolutely love the guy. He's a dear friend, a talent, an underrated singer, an amazing songwriter. And, yeah. Uh, I just I wish him and Holmes, I wish him and Holmes. Um, I don't know about could, that. Could find could find their way. I know I know the problem, and and I don't you know I don't think Holmes is wrong, but I feel like there could be a, a medium if everybody would stop talking. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I love Black. I love him. It's also could be because. Get him. No, I was just gonna say, it's a, it's a surprising response because not a lot of ex members have have good things to say. I mean, I shouldn't say it that way. Um, me and him had a, a long turbulent, a, a long relationship, and it was a little turbulent here and there. But 16 years with somebody in an, in a band, and, right. I, and I was in and out. I was in and out a few times, but that's a long relationship, man. You know, and uh, you know, and made one of the best, one. one of the best albums in that in his career. Yeah, and one of one of all your albums you've done were awesome. I'm saying that one, Crimson Idol, was it was. You can't top that. I'm sorry, Crimson Idol changed my career. I mean, I had already had a little bit of noise with Impelitary with Graham Bond and all that, you know, and I was, we had the MTV video and things were good and we did some stuff. But after, after, after the Crimson Idol, it just changed my life. I mean, it really yeah. did. And I, and I got to share drum duties with, you know, now, uh, uh, you know, the legendary Frankie. I know, you know, his drumming was impeccable. We all have our business, whatever, but that guy's drumming was, was fantastic. And I was, you know, I like being in that in that you know category of legend. You know, so right. And it could be also because he's from Staten Island, he's from New York. He could be obnoxious like me too. So we we rub people the wrong way. Don't take it personally. You know what I mean? I heard I, I heard that had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> and a hell of a baseball player. Oh no, shit. Blackie. It's a hell of a oh, baseball Blackie. player. Yeah. Talk about Frankie. Yeah, yeah. Blackie. Oh, Frankie's from New York too. We're, we're gonna get to that. Frankie's from Queens, where, where I'm from. Yeah, he was. Yeah. See, Carl, and that I'm sorry, Stet. I, I'm gonna cut you off. I gotta go to uh Carl. I'll come back to you. I'm fine. I, I'm gonna go to uh Carlos. Carlos, I have to say it, Frankie Benali. 
Uh, I love the guy. He oh. was hard to get along with at times, uh, kind of a controlling person. Uh, but, you know, he was a talented guy, great drummer, you know. Uh, uh, he, uh, Kevin and I wrote most of the material in that band. He wasn't really a songwriter, but, uh, you know, I know we had our differences, but I still love the guy. You know, he was my my family for 20 plus years, you know. Yeah, I, I, I got to say there's two calls. I'm glad I got you on here because I've had Stephen Piercy on here. I mentioned this to him and I've had Lou Graham on my show from Florida. What is your take on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And do you think I, I, I think that Quiet Riot should be in there because they were they brought this genre. If you want to even say I hate to use the term hair metal, but hair, if you want to say hair metal to the masses, I mean, you guys had a friggin phenomenon in 1983. I mean, Everybody had that album. They, it came like 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 um, they said in Wayne's World. It came with boxes of Tide. <laughs> <laughs> your album. I mean, what's your take? Do you feel honestly that Quiet Riot deserves in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I do. I do. Uh, we, we, we probably do. Probably do. But um, you know, we were we were definitely there at the beginning. But there are other bands as well that kind of paved the way for us. Like Van Halen was there before us, and. Def Leppard as well, um, which kind of helped us probably in some way or, or another. But um, we probably do, I would think. Okay, so you're going to suggest. All right, guys. I mean, uh, listen, fans, the album is out on Eonian Records. Did I say it right this time? Yeah. Eonian and Records. And they also have a limited edition bundle pack. It comes with a CD, vinyl, a download, a T-shirt, four guitar picks, and a three-sticker pack. That's available on EonianRecords.com. Um, you guys have a Facebook page as well, correct? Yeah, there's a there's a group page there going on. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and that sticker pack thing, I think there's like five of those left. So you Really? Get, but, Ooh, yeah. I better order mine. <laughs> how's, that, how's that bong doing ronnie <laughs> i love you hey man come on <laughs> i love you so much Did you say how's that bong bong b-o-n-g b-o-n-g sir yeah oh, okay uh, bong hey listen yeah, I'm edit bong. That part out, man. come on edit, edit, edit that out i'm just oh, all right now call us how's your schlong doing <laughs> well my schlong i like my bong better <laughs> hey all right hey now i know why you're so quiet Stay. My wife's so not let's my talk. He took it with yeah, yeah, I know. My my, bu my balls are in my wife's purse. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, which which I wanted to mention. You, Ronnie, you wrote this song about me. My wife says it all the time about me when I'm touching. Her. I got ice cold hands. That's the song on the album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Stead, you want to mention uh Stead, Stead Winkler's house in Florida? Well, yeah, I have a I have a cool bar. Uh, it's we we switch it. It's called Stead's Bar now, and it's uh in Fort Myers, Florida. And uh, it's the happiest place on earth, man. The, I have the pub end, which is like Cheers. And I've had regulars that have been coming here since 1987. And uh, I have the uh, the back end, which is a showroom. And it's a it's a full concert stage. It's pretty pretty darn good. I'm sitting on it right now. And um, yeah, we're just starting to do events. We're just starting to do ticketed events. And uh, I have my buddy Steve Unger, the bass player from Metal Church. Metal Church. Has a, yeah, he has a band called Alive 85. And Alive 85 is a... Um, uh, an Elvis, an Elvis tribute, and it's uh, the show that never was. It's what if Elvis lived to 1985, and it is Love sheer it. genius. It, this guy yeah. is amazing, and so we're. Um, it's been he's been doing it on the West Coast for a few years now, and now we're putting together the, the East Coast version, kind of like Trans Siberian Orchestra. We got he has a West Coast, and we're gonna have an East Coast one, and um, I'm gonna play drums in this one, and uh, we have uh, a show in Pompano on the. Uh, 4th of April, which we're playing Orlando on the 5th, and then we're playing my uh, Stets Bar on the 6th of April. And um, we're, we're, I'm just having a great time down here, man. It's really great. Stets Winkler's house. Show. Well, it's actually, it was, and now it's Stets Bar. We, okay. We the Winkler house. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's legal stuff. But, Henry, uh, Henry shoot him. Henry didn't want to say the, use the name. The fonts, ever, shoot him. See the hands? <laughs> the, record, the recording studio is over there. I have my drums and mic. You can't see them, but... Uh, the uh, freak show, my, my uh, drums are still up and mic'd and uh, ready for the next record. Awesome. And, um, yeah, Ronnie, what do we got? Record. What do we got with you, Ronnie? Is, is freak show taking up all your time or you're still with, you know, Miss Crazy's done, right? No, I, I don't. I don't do anything but my family. You know, I, you know, we're all family guys. So, 
you know, when there's something to do, like I'm the, I'm the less, I don't do anything but play in this right now, you know? So, and uh, so I'm just hanging out waiting for Stet's call for the gigs and, uh, and I can't wait for us to start rehearsing and stuff. It's going to be great. Yes. Are you going to be rehearsing at your studio Stet? Yeah. Well, uh, if on the East coast stuff, we will rehearse at my place and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll do, we'll probably do a little Florida run. I believe, I believe that the smartest thing to do is to start on the West Coast to make it more convenient for Carlos and Greg. And um, we have strongholds such as uh, Vamped and the Whiskey that we know we can get, you know, we know we can do good numbers at both of those places, you know, without thinking. And um, I don't, we don't have a firm plan yet, but, but we're just about to, to, to assemble offers and really get it together. But uh, when we go to the East Coast, yeah, everybody can come here. I have, oh, uh, I'd, love, I'd love to meet you guys. I'm definitely going to go to that one. Oh yeah, we're, we're, we'll it'll be good stuff. I have a whole network of great venues here in Florida and um, promoters that are good friends of mine, and and uh, Florida is a really good rock and roll market. It really is. It's, it's yeah, it uh, is. It is. And, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get with Carlos, and I'm gonna get get Carlos out of his shell when I see him. <laughs> yeah, he's fine, bro. Yeah, I love the beaches there. They're awesome. Man, yeah. and, you know, it's funny. I just the other day I did some beach therapy because uh, a lot of stuff going on. You know. I know it sounds ridiculous, but my dog just died not long ago. And, and, and oh, sorry. dude, that is one of the most treacherous, painful, gut-wrenching things, you know? So I went yeah. down just a few days ago to Doggy Beach and hung out and, you know, and I cleared my soul and the beach clears me out, you know? Yeah, it does. And, uh, and in Florida is, uh, the people are very kind. They, a lot of them have a, like the, the, the water sign beach mentality. So, you know. Yeah. And so I'm very lucky. I, I own, I own a, a, um, this the little, the, my bar is a, is a happy, it's very much like cheers. Like I said, there's really nice people there all the time. So if I'm like, you know, not feeling happy or anything, I walk in my bar and I sit down and. Stay! and I'm, I'm, oh yeah, I'm awesome. yucking it up with people, you know, pe people that would never talk to me in real life, in life or, or, you know, talk to me about their, their stuff. And, you know, I, I like it here. I like it. Greg, what are we doing is, is, um, there you go. Is, um, Freak Show going to be uh, your priority? I mean, we, we all know that you run Bizarre Guitar in, in Arizona. Yep. You can give that place a plug. Huge, Bizarre, huge guitar shop. Bizarre Guitar and Drum in Phoenix, Arizona. Yes. Uh, I have uh, a couple records I'm going to be doing for people coming up here. Um, my buddy Ryan McKay, who I was in Atomic Kings with. Uh, He's on the show. Yeah, he and I are writing some songs for a record he's doing with his brother. And then I'm doing a record with uh, my friend Greg Mara and Jimmy DeAnda. Um, oh, from Bullet Boys. Yeah, for something called Plenty Heavy. I'm just kind of waiting for that to come together. But it, those are basically just recording projects. And uh, between that, it's just family and uh, baseball for me. Awesome. Yeah, that Plenty Heavy, That's uh, that was like my first girlfriend. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, she was uh, she was pretty big. They called her funny head. Carlos, I had I had a uh, Carmine Apathy on the on the show, and and um, I stay in contact with him. Are you in King Cobra, or you're not in King Cobra? Are you doing anything well, with we, that? We did a record together, uh, basically the same way as I did this record. I recorded it from home digitally, which is basically the second record I've ever done in my career like that without going to a studio with the whole band. Right, uh, but we did we did a record, but uh, everybody's so busy. I don't know if anybody can even get together to do any kind of shows. We we were trying to work on it, but it hasn't worked out yet. Right. It was you and another phenomenal guitar, Rowan Robinson. Yeah, me and Rowan, uh, and then uh, you know Carmine and, Carmine and Paul, and uh, uh, my brother played bass in one song, and also um, <laughs> Johnny Rod on bass, obviously. Awesome, awesome. That's funny. Yeah. Well, guys, listen, it's been an honor meeting you guys. Uh, fans, go out and get the CD. Remember, it's on Eonian Records. They also have a Facebook group, a Facebook page. Website not done yet. We don't have a website. No, but we got a couple videos on. Uh, Absolutely. They're doing pretty good. Like I told them, I said, start with You Shine. That song is still stuck uh, in my head. I you love Shine. It. Stupid. That song is my favorite, man. I love that damn thing. And Chet, and I keep calling you fucking Chet. Where am I getting Chet from? Chet, Chet Atkins. Chet, no, Chet, Chet from Weird, from Weird Science. Chet Thompson. <laughs> right, Ronnie? Yeah. He's like Weird I'm Science? Chet, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Who, who said Chet Thompson? I did. That, Chet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Ronnie were thinking the same thing, Chet from fucking Weird Science. Bill Paxton. <laughs> you should be in a band with Chet Thompson. You're still, you butt one. 
I used to be, I used to be in a band with Chet Thompson. I did. I, I was in. I was in. I did. I did too. I was in uh, um, Slam Nation uh, okay. right after World War Three. Yeah, Chet's amazing, dude. He, very yeah, talented. He, very talented. Funny. How about a nice greasy pork sandwich served in a dirty ashtray? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey, Ralph. That's a, that's a line from the movie. What's hey, up, guys? You know what I like that from that really quick. Hey. Uh, can we come in there? Oh, Gary was just taking a shit. <laughs> he's taking a shit. <laughs> he's, he's going like this. He's got the max lit in there. We're talking about Weird Science, guys. The movie Weird Science with Kelly oh, LeBron. I remember. I remember. That. I mean, I guess we're pretty close in age because any teenager growing up in 1985, that was the movie to see. Dude, I remember that movie like it was fucking yesterday. Look, yeah. How about Fast Time? <laughs> we, we, did a, we did an interview the other day, you guys. And uh, they asked, what's your favorite movie? It's and still going of, on. It's still going all, on. What's that? All, all of us said Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It was fucking crazy. Pretty much, yeah. Come here. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, he goes, what are you doing? Learning about Cuba and having some food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've been thinking about this. If it's my, if you're here and are here, doesn't it make it our time? Our time. Oh, Mr. All right. Han. Mr. Hey, Han. Here's what I'm doing right here. Hang on. Check this out. Oh! oh <laughs> Look at that, that big boy. That's my twin brother. That's my twin brother. Well, guys. Is that a bull mastiff or something? It's a French mastiff. French. Hey, I'll stay all night. This is great. I can't get yeah, these legends off my show. This is fucking no, awesome. <laughs> I, Carlos just, I got Carlos to talk about whacking off. I got Steck talking about everything. Greg is showing his dog. Ronnie got mad because I say he sounds like Tammy Down. I mean, <laughs> we're, all, we're all good. Hey, can, can I say another thing? May, may I, well, may I, go, go ahead. The floor is yours, uh, Check. What the fuck, right? <laughs> yeah, so my dog you know, just made an appearance. You, <laughs> your dog's awesome. So you'd ask me about um, my bar and everything, but but I didn't get to the part of like, hey, Seth, what else are you doing? And it's like, I just want to say that... Uh, uh, not, how familiar are you with John Beauvoir? Oh, spelled J E A N Beauvoir. Yeah, wrote yeah. a song with Kiss. Okay, so John, I, I'm in John's band. I'm, I I uh, played drums for John, and I booked John. And uh, we we're going to to uh, Europe in uh, July. We got a couple of festivals. Um, I just want oh, to plug him. He's such a beautiful human. I mean, we have so much fun. He lives here in Florida. He's down in Naples, and um, I saw. Geez, I've been playing with him off and on for almost ten years now. Uh, just awesome. an amazing guy. And um, I just did a record with Tommy Boland at N NYC. Um, he, he's had this N NYC band for a little while. And me and Steve Unger did the record. Uh, we did pre-production and recorded in L.A. And it came out amazing. And I just um, recorded a, just a killer song with uh, Brian Vollmer from Helix just like a few days ago. You know, it's like I, I, I don't know if it's the beginning of a Helix record or what, but it was just a, a beautiful experience. So. I just want to, because I didn't want to just be talking about bar stuff. I want to say, hey, I, I'm also a music. music what about anything, brother? <laughs> you so, that's, that's anything. It. Sorry. I just want to throw that out there. You got it. All right, guys, listen, it's been an honor. Honestly, I had a great time. I'm sure you, I hope you guys did. Um, did. This interview will be up soon. And I wish you guys all the continued success in the world. Ronnie, Greg, Carlos, Stet, love you guys. You're part of the Rock Shop family. I will be in contact with you. I will be in contact with you. Um, want to get Thanks, you guys bro. some some show T-shirts. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, guys. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, brother. All right. Take Bye. Thank you much. All right. Cool.